Hi again, this is uh, Grow Your Own with Pace, Practical Actions for Climate and the Environment. Uh, this week we're just looking at maintenance of the crops and particularly to do with weeding and watering. We've already covered the pests on another episode. So these obviously need weeding. Um, these are our alliums, our garlic, our shallots and our onions. And um, so what I'm going to do is just take the obvious weeds out very obvious with alliums what, what's, a, what's the plant and what isn't. Um, so there, there are some um, pernicious weeds like that dock there for example or like this green alkanet here. So they've got long roots and if I just take the top off then they'll, they'll get down and get that one out. There we go. So that's a perennial weed so I need to get that out. That'll go in a separate bucket. And there's a dock there look. That'll have the same a long root on the bottom of it. So I need, if I can, get that right out. There it is. Whereas that's a bit of cleavers there, look. Sticky buds. That's fine, that can go in the compost heap. Most of these small weeds will be fine in the compost heap. These grasses and so on. As long as they haven't got a, uh, a root on like that, then it'll be okay. So I take them out particularly close to the close to the uh, to the plants, the vegetables. Get those out, and then when I've got those out, I can get my trusty hoe, and I can then row between uh, hoe between them without risk of actually nicking the plants. It's very easy to nick one of these plants, and uh, and then you've ruined your work. So. But uh, once you've got them out close to the plant, then it's uh, easier to go between the plants. So that's in a very obvious situation where it's very clear what the, what the crop is. But let's go and have a look at one or two which are a bit more difficult. So now these are our parsnips. Do you remember us uh, sowing parsnips? Uh, here they are. And they've got quite a few weeds in them. The problem with the small seeded things like parsnips is it's quite difficult to tell, you know, what's the parsnip and what's the weed. So there's a little group of parsnips there, look, and there's all this lot, which is a weed, so I, I need to try and get that out, hopefully without disturbing too many. You can see the real leaves on the parsnip there, look. If they've only got the seedlings, um, the cotyledons, um, the seedling leaves, then it's much more difficult. So again, I clear, clear around the patch, trying to leave my parsnips in place. Here's another little group here, look, as I sowed them in groups. All right, so. Just clear around the patch first. Now that's that looks like a parsnip, but isn't a parsnip. That's a jack by the hedge there. So we'll have that out now. Clear around this. Here's another little group of parsnips. Look. So we quickly get used to, you know, what a what the seedling looks like. But until you got used to it, it can be quite difficult. Fingers are often the best, but you know, some different types of tools you might have just to help you. Um, you know, get there's there's a couple of parsnips. There's just one parsnip on that one's. God, there's another one there. Look, so I can take those weeds away. Otherwise, they'll compete with them and stop them growing. Every so often, I'll nick a parsnip. I know, but I put more parsnip seed in than we needed. So um, they're in two rows. There'll be another row on that side. Look, there they are again. So they're difficult at this stage. Just making sure you get the weeds out and not the parsnips. Right, so now I can see where the parsnip, little groups of parsnips are. I can sow hoe between between them. Still being careful, but uh, oops, nearly. So easy to catch one. That's it. On this side of them as well. Or on that side of them as well. And then after I've cleaned the weeds out, then I'll I'll water them because I will have disturbed them somewhat, but. Now we can see where the parsnip groupings are. Aha, at this end of the row, look, the parsnips aren't quite as well developed. You can see just how difficult they are to tell um, when they've just got the cotyledons on. Here are the carrots then. Um, you can just see them. They're just getting their true leaves there, look. The uh, cotyledons are very uh, fine there. Very difficult to tell what's what until they've got their true leaves. Now they've got them. And I'm wanting to cover the carrots up now to stop the carrot fly. So I'll take 
these uh, as many of these I can get out I'll get them out now I don't need to get everything out of course but a few of these weeds let's get them out of the way and I'll just clean it up a little bit before I put the covers on right, so uh, that's the carrots weeded a bit of a painstaking job that but it, it, just the ones I'll have to weed them so all those weeds can go on the compost heap and those uh, perennial weeds well they'll have to be burnt um, Right after we've weeded, then give them a good water. So, uh, and I'll put some wire covers on now. And give them a good water. I didn't get all the weeds, <laughs> not most of them. <laughs> got a few carrots as well. <laughs> Right, so here we are putting the last piece of netting on, the old net curtains. Can get proper fleece and things like that, but net curtains will do. <laughs> this one's got uh, planets and stars and the moon on it. <laughs> anyway, that's all to stop the, um, the carrot fly. So that will be coming out now, beginning of May, it'll be out or end of April. So uh, that should, should do the job. So just a little bit about watering. Um, obviously if your crops are dry they need water. So I like these peas here. Then um, they're struggling for water because we haven't had rain in Essex now for what five weeks. So it's been a long dry spell. And we get dry spells in, in Essex. Um, we've got low rainfall. Lower than the rainfall of Jerusalem can you believe. We're semi-arid in Essex. So you are going to get dry spells. Yeah, we need to think uh, carefully about watering. Water is a precious resource and it's also expensive, isn't it? So we need to capture as much as we can. So here's uh, our ramshackle arrangement for capturing water from the sheds. We have a much more sophisticated arrangement on the house where all the gutters feed into a big rainwater tank. Um, anyway, think about, think about how you can capture water in your own garden because you're going to use quite a lot of water. Yeah, think about when we're watering as well. You know, here we are towards the end of the day, so the water will have time to soak in rather than just evaporating. And probably water every second day. You don't need to water every day. Um, partly to save water, but partly to encourage the crops to get their roots down. If you give them water every, every day, they won't do that, so make them work for it. I'll just give those lettuces a bit of water as well. But uh, just recap that uh, pace is about actions, practical actions uh, for climate and the environment. And um, one of the reasons we're getting dry spells is because of climate change. So that's one side of it. And the other side of it is that you know water is very, very heavy stuff to move. So it takes a lot of energy. The water companies, companies require a lot of energy to move water around. So if we can use less water, use it more efficiently, then that will also reduce uh, carbon emissions. So good luck with your weeding and your watering.